Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Vitale, and welcome to this weekly television show called Zero Limits Living. My plan here is to help you. There's a lot of chaos in the world. There's a lot of confusion in the world. There's a lot of unpredictable things happening. The future doesn't look very clear for most of us. And if you're like virtually everybody else on the planet, you've been tap dancing to keep up. You've been struggling. You've been confused. You haven't been sure what to do. And you've probably looked around to find out, who do I blame? Who's responsible for this? Who's going to fix it? Well, you and I are going to fix it. And we're going to fix it every week on the Zero Limits Living television show. I'm Dr. Joe Vitale. I know what it's like to struggle. I was homeless. I was in poverty. I had many dark nights of the soul. Went through divorce, went through deaths of family members, also went through the pandemic, just like you. And I've also had to change my life and my career, just like you are probably looking at doing, if not already doing, right now. And along the way, I learned a lot of things that actually work. And I want to tell you about them. I want to share the tricks, the techniques, the methods, all of the things, the hacks that actually work in life. But there's a lot of things people tell you about and they're bogus. They don't actually work. And there's a lot of people out there trying to tell you what to do. And whether they are consciously or unconsciously doing it, they are often misleading you. What actually works? What can you take to the bank? How can you improve your relationships? How can you improve your business? How can you improve your relationship with money, your family, your friends, your kids, your neighbors, your employees, your clients? How can you create better relationships? How can you create and manifest a life that maybe you've been dreaming about and maybe you've been thinking most recently, it's almost impossible to achieve? Now, I mentioned I had been homeless. I mentioned that I went through poverty. Today, I live the lifestyle of the rich and famous, even despite the pandemic. I've written 80-some books. The most recent is called Karmic Marketing, and it just came out today. Karmic Marketing. 80 books. I'm a musician. I have 15 studio albums released. I've performed on stage with the Band of Legends, which these guys are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm in several movies, including the hit movie, The Secret. I've created 200 online programs. I have a coaching program. I have a mentoring program. I have been traveling around the world before the pandemic, getting on stages in countries I didn't even know existed when I was growing up, all to rally these people to have a life that they've been dreaming about, a life that they've been deserving. I want to share this with you. So every week, I'm going to be sharing what I've learned that actually works. I want this to be practical. Practical. I want this to be something you can take to the bank. I want this to change your life. I'm enough of an entrepreneur to want results, but I'm also a metaphysical guy. I'm also a marketing guy. I'm also a motivational guy. And I'm bringing all of this ammo to you every week. And thanks to Candace and Lux Media Studios, who is making this possible for you, you're gonna be able to tune in, watch it on their app, watch it online, and just keep soaking up the information and inspiration. Now, I'm fortunate enough to know a lot of people. And what I have today for this premiere show, the very first weekly Zero Limits Living television show, is one of my favorite people on the entire planet. This man is the greatest living hypnotist in the world. He's also my hypnotist. In fact, I'm a little afraid to interview him because as soon as I hear his voice, I might go into a trance. But all kidding aside, we're not here to talk about hypnosis so much as we're talking about getting results and getting results in a streamlined way. My guest today is Tim Shore, and Tim Shore has written six or more books. Even today, he gave a keynote speech somewhere, did interviews somewhere, and made time for this interview, and he wrote One Belief Away. And if you note, I'm the co-author of the book. Truth be known, he wrote this book. I encouraged him. I am part of it, but this is his brainchild, and he's turning One Belief Away into a brand for himself. 
This is a man who knows how to help you get into your unconscious mind and change the wiring because when you change that wiring, you get different results on the outside. When I began the introduction saying that we're looking around to find out who's going to make the change, who's going to help the planet, who's going to make a difference in your life, my life, and everybody else's life, it's you. And you're going to do it by doing inner work. And one aspect of it is this most powerful concept of one belief away. So, Tim, are you there? I'm here, Joe, and fully inspired as I listen to you like I always am and so excited to be on this spectacular program with you because I know that you and your viewers together are going to elevate the consciousness in our world. So I'm very excited and honored to be the first guest on your show. And you are the first guest, and thank you for saying yes at a last minute notice to do this, but that's the kind of guy you are. Tim and I met some 20 or more years ago at a National Hypnosis Guild convention, I believe it was. We've stayed in contact and, of course, have now come out with this book. Tim, why is it important that we understand that there's operating beliefs in our mind, whether it's conscious, subconscious, unconscious? Why is that important? Because those unconscious beliefs are the brain software that's running in your mind that are causing you to filter the world in a way that empowers you and lifts you up or in a way that is holding you back from your greatness, from the fulfillment that you could have, from the success or the closeness in the relationships or the improved health, or just for a general feeling of security and peace inside. If we don't recognize that we have unconscious programming that we absorbed when we were little girls and little boys, and that programming is now affecting us as an adult, and often we don't even know that programming exists, that is what leads to the suffering, Joe. That is what holds people back. When people feel like they're blocked or they're stuck. I had a, a woman tell me today, she said, I didn't even know that it was possible for me to have this breakthrough. I thought I was going to go to my grave this way. And so you and I are both shouting from the mountaintops that you have the power inside of you to set yourself free. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So what my role is here, at least as I see it, is to be an advocate for the people that are watching who are probably new to this. And some of them are hearing this going, first of all, if my beliefs are unconscious, how am I supposed to know them? They're freaking unconscious. That would be the first concept. The second one is, are beliefs really that powerful? Can a belief really stop somebody from having a great relationship, health, more money, better business, anything like that? That's two questions, but I'll just, you know, I'm going to throw grenades at you. Grenade <laughs> one, grenade two. <laughs> okay, so let's take the unconscious part of it first. That's right. Uh, because they're unconscious, they're kind of like blind spots. You don't quite see them, but you will see it in your results. So if you're procrastinating, if you are struggling with bad habits, if you have addictions, if you know that you need to be focusing and following through, but you're not, if you tell yourself, I'm going to keep it cool with my relationship or with my spouse, and then they say something, and within 10 seconds, you go off, and then afterwards, you're like, what just happened, right? What is causing that to happen? Well, it's this these unconscious beliefs, these patterns that we developed from uh, our upbringing. And so you've seen the old picture of the iceberg and, and it's a giant iceberg and the tip of it is at the top of the water, but then there's this whole 80% of it is actually underneath the surface and you don't even know it was there. And that's kind of like how our mind works. Our conscious mind where we use our logic and our willpower and our reasoning skills, that only controls about 20% of what you do, which is why you can have the best intentions. I'm not going to eat those cookies. I'm not going to pick up that cigarette. I'm not going to spend that money, uh, you know, on, on whatever app uh, tonight in the middle of the night when I'm supposed to be sleeping. You know, I'm not going to do it. And then we do it. Why? And it's because of that 80% of that programming is inside of our mind. And there are ways to be able to uncover those unconscious beliefs People are just never taught how to do it. So once you understand, it actually is quite simple. Well, give so us a second way. <laughs> yeah, well, give us a way to change one of the unconscious beliefs. And the, so, one thing I want to point out for people watching, and I have Tim tap dancing here because I'm shooting bullets at his feet and he has to adapt 
and respond <laughs> because neither one of us talked about the questions or the nature of the show. Even my introduction, it wasn't scripted. There's no teleprompter. There's no green screen. There's nobody here. It is me and Tim and Chris in the studio recording all of this. We're doing it virtually. So when I shoot a question at Tim and he's responding, he's doing this in the moment. And when I change on him and say, okay, now give us a way to find one of our unconscious beliefs, for example, and change it, that's also happening in the moment. This is raw, this is real, this is inspired, and this is now. And it's happening because I want to be of the most value to people, as I know you do, Tim. So I'm going to shut up. What's a way to change a belief? Uh, you just keep talking, my friend. I love it. So inspiring. <laughs> so inspiring you are. So... Yes, uh, I have a, um, a formula that you subscribe to as well. Preparation plus opportunity equals success, right? And so I'm prepared for whatever you throw at me because this is what we do. This is our life's work. This is our mission. My personal mission is to end needless emotional suffering. So I have dozens and dozens of tools, tips, and strategies that can help. And so the, to answer your question, how do you uncover an unconscious belief? You can do it by asking one simple question over and over and over and uncovering as Shrek once said in, in those movies that I'm like an onion, right? And I have layers. And so the question is, what would I have to believe in order to feel the way I'm feeling? What would I have to believe in order to feel the way that I'm feeling? So whatever it is, if you're feeling stressed out about money, then or a relationship doesn't matter. Let's talk about money because it's a holiday season and most people are schwitzing about, you know, that. And so, uh, okay, so I'm really stressed out. Well, what would I have to believe in order to feel really stressed out? Well, I'd have to believe that I'm gonna go into a whole bunch of debt. Well, then what would I have to believe, you know, to feel all stressed out if I think about a bunch of debt? Well, that I'm never gonna be able to get out of it. Well, what would I have to believe? And you just keep asking the same question. What you find is that if you keep asking it, what we're really afraid of is that I'm not safe. I'm gonna run out of money. I'm going to end up losing my home. My family's going to abandon me. People are going to discover that I'm really not very worth much. And that I'm going to, my deepest fear that I'm not good enough is going to be the ultimate outcome. And that deep fear that I'm not enough. And because I'm not enough, I won't be loved is the deepest fear that we all have. The fear of rejection, the fear of abandonment, the fear of humiliation, the fear of failure, they all come from that deep fear that I'm not going to be able to be enough to figure this out. When the truth is you are, you might need a little education, some inspiration from our dear friend, Dr. Joe, but you definitely have the ability to create your life in the way you want it to be, regardless of what you've been through. So that's one simple technique that you can use. Ask the right question. And that is a way to hone in on a key belief because the title of the book is One Belief Away. And if we're only working with a dozen different uh, beliefs, we may not get to what I'm calling the root belief, what we're calling the main belief. And you are pointing that out. So one belief away is referring to the idea that once you know what that one belief is, which could be I'm not good enough, when you said I'm not safe. I, I felt a chill, like I resonated with that. It's like, oh, that's a big one. That's underneath a lot of other beliefs and a lot of conditions. I quickly want to tell you, as you know, I know Lou Ferrigno, who played the Hulk. And one time I had dinner with him, and I barely knew the guy at the time. So I'm sitting there at dinner, and he looks at me and he goes, what are you afraid of? And I was kind of startled. It's like, I barely know this guy. This is kind of a deep <laughs> personal question. And he looked at me yeah. and he says, what are you afraid of? And I said, um, I, I kind of stumbled. And he said, you know, you know. And I thought, and I said, well, I'm afraid of losing it all. I had been homeless at one point in poverty. And that's what he was getting to. For whatever reason, I don't know why the Hulk wanted to bring that up. But it was a relevant moment because it helped me see a belief that was still there knowing that if I change the belief, one belief away, that there would be freedom on the other side. Now, having said that, you've just helped us hone in on a belief. Once we find the belief, what do we do about it? Well, the simplest answer is we upgrade it to a new belief. What would you rather believe instead? <clears throat> the trick is, one, clarifying what you want to believe, because most people struggle with what they want. 
they're very clear on what they don't want, what they don't like, what they're afraid of, and what they're unhappy about, which is why they keep attracting it into their life. Because what you focus on, you move towards. But very few people are very clear on what they actually do want. If you say, I'm going to give you a million dollars, what will you do with it? People say the same things. I pay off debt. I give some money to charity. I travel. And then they run out of ideas because they're not really spending any time really getting crystal clear on how they want to show up in the day and how they want to spend their time and what kind of relationships they want to have and how they want to take care of their body and you know what they want to do that gives them meaning and fulfillment because we feel like we're so busy just trying to get through the day that we're not focused on what we can get from today. Hmm. And so clarifying what we actually want is the first step. The second step is to get ourselves to believe that it's possible, to believe that I am worthy after a lifetime of telling myself or feeling like I'm not, you know, to suddenly say, to go from feeling anxious all the time to telling yourself, no, I'm full of peace and calm. People are going to be like, no, that's BS belief systems, right? That's not, that's not accurate, right? And so we got to help people to believe in the new belief because a belief is just an opinion. It's just an idea. And so the way that you do that, Joe, as you already know, is we have to build new resources. We've got to create new emotional experiences in your mind that allow you to take your power back, you know, that allow you to take the, the tiny little pieces of a broken heart and put it back together so that you recognize your own value and your own worth and you suddenly feel the sense of self-love and acceptance. And so we've created experiences that are in that book that take people through that rebuilding, reparenting journey. And what I want to look at is the idea that you and I both have done enough interviews separately, and we've done a few together, that a lot of people will be inspired for a little bit, may or may not go buy the book, may or may not read it if they do buy it, may or may not do the exercises if they do get the book and read the book. And so what I'm looking at, if somebody is watching this, the Zero Limits Living TV show, and this is all they do. What can we give them to actually change a morsel of their life? What can we give them right now to reboot their belief system? I know from my experience, and I'm sure you do too, that there's a whole lot of people who just think all of the belief stuff, whether it's hypnosis, self-improvement, self-image, uh, personal self-help, is all BS. They don't believe it. And of course, that's a belief right there. But because they don't believe it, there's no change and they don't even allow it in. The people that are watching right now, or at least they got a window open, a crack. What can we give them from your experience? You've done tens of thousands of sessions with people um, from authorities, experts, uh, all kinds of people from all walks of life. So I, I'm putting your feet in the fire a little bit, but hey, I'm known as Mr. Fire. Let's light the fire. Let's put your feet in it and let's see what you come up with on how can we help somebody that's watching and looking for that morsel of hope. So I think the best thing you could do if you were just going to make one decision to test this out and improve your life is to tune in and watch this show each week. And for this one episode, <clears throat> what you can do is simply ask yourself, how do I treat the little girl or the little boy that lives inside of me? Do mm. I treat them with love? Do I treat them with care? Do I encourage them and support them? Do I lift them up and help them to believe in themselves? Do I compliment them and catch them doing things right? Or do I shame them mm. and scare them and hurt them and abuse them? That is simply a reality check, right? How do you treat yourself? I was very skeptical. I was very uh, much didn't want to get my hopes up. And as you have found too, a lot of the approaches out there, I think are ineffective and they waste a lot of time. A lot of stuff that's mainstream is a waste of time. And if you don't upgrade the, if you don't get to the root and you just try to cut the top off of weed, it's just going to keep growing. And trying to be a positive thinker when you don't really ever believe it is just wasting your time and, and creating a second trauma, which is there must be something wrong with me that this isn't working. Mm -hmm. And it reinforces that original fear. So what we do is we just have a reality check and say, hey, how are you treating 
that little girl or boy inside of you secretly in your own mind. And you know what the answer is to that. You know if you're being your own best friend or if you're being a bully in your own mind. You know if you are showing up making loving deposits into your health and happiness or if you are making withdrawals so many that you're bouncing checks now. You know the truth. You can't hide it from yourself. And so if you want to have a little reality check, you simply just think really deeply about how are you taking care of that little kid inside of you? And then you can talk about why you do take care of them or why you don't and what beliefs you would have to upgrade. But if you recognize that something is not the way you want it to be, you have the ability, you might not know how, but you have the ability to enhance and upgrade your beliefs your behaviors, and your feelings. Hmm. A lot of times when I was little hmm. and so full of anxiety, I was waiting, Joe, just waiting and praying that someone was going to save me. Someone was going to swoop in and rescue me from that anxiety and fear because at the time I felt like it was happening to me and many bad things did happen to me. But as I got older, I realized that I kept the fear going in my mind. I thought anxiety was happening to me. I didn't realize that I was doing anxiety. I was running a pattern that I did not recognize I was running. So if you would have said it's my fault, I would have been furious because I'm suffering and I'm kind of a victim. And I had to change that victim mentality, which you have written about extensively and turn yourself into a victor. And so the tools and the resources are there. The education is there. And if you don't want to take it, I hope you enjoy suffering. Tell me a success story. Tell me, our listeners here, our viewers, a story that can make them relate. Like, if that happened to that man or woman, then it's possible that I could change too. Do you have a favorite story or two? I have hundreds of them. <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> That's so I was grinning. It's like, I know he does. <laughs> so... But I have one that's really, I mean, you can really see the change. So Kathleen came to see me and she was near 300 pounds and uh, she was in her early 60s and she said, Tim, I can't lose weight. I've tried everything and it just doesn't work for me. So I'm here to see if you could hypnotize me to be a happy, fat person. I just want to be happy. I'm so tired of feeling miserable all the time because of my weight. I just want to be a happy, fat person. And then she started crying. And I knew that's not what she wanted. That's what she was settling for because she did not know any other way. She had tried every approach out there that she thought of and, and that that's provided and it just didn't work for her. And so I knew about upgrading unconscious beliefs. So I said, that's what we're going to do. We're going to upgrade what's going on in your mind and we're going to create a new experience. And we did. And through that experience, she learned to love herself. The goal was no longer to lose weight, the goal, because that's something you're moving away from. You want to be moving towards your goal, not running away from something. So when we are, when we started moving towards her goal every day, she showed self-love and self-acceptance by eating something healthy or drinking water or going for a walk or doing something, uh, saying something nice to herself. So she kept pouring into herself and making deposits into her uh, health and happiness account. And expressing self-love, which she had never done before, because her core fundamental belief, because she had difficulty with her father growing up, is that dad doesn't think I'm good enough, so I am not good enough or worthy enough to take care of myself or love myself. So how can you possibly stay on a program or achieve goals or stay with it or stay motivated if you unconsciously fundamentally believe that you're not worth the effort? So she always gave up because it satisfied the program that you're not enough until we change that program to I am enough. And it's funny, Joe, as you know, that all we have to do is tell ourselves something new and then emotionally reinforce it. And then that becomes our new reality and people can change in an instant. And so that's what happened. And then we reinforce that. And we I taught her some more tools and tricks, of course, but that changing her uh, relationship with herself. 10 months later, she was down 154 pounds. Wow. And loving herself. Uh, that was five years ago. I stay connected with my clients to make sure that it's lasting, sustainable change. And it's been five years. She moved to a, a new city and she's loving her life. And 
she still, you know, looks great and feels great and is loving herself. And every time I talk to her, she just laughs the whole time. She's just so full oh. of joy, you know, oh. where before she used to That's just good. sob. Wow. Beautiful story. And you can literally, I mean, she's half the person that she was, but she didn't change who she is. She just realized how wonderful she already was. And that's that is, what oh. is in store for all of us who are ready. That is beautiful. That's a story about health. Now, Candace, who runs the Lux Media Studios and is allowing us to do this and put my TV show on on a weekly basis, tells me that a lot of the viewers are entrepreneurs. And though they may have a weight problem or a health problem, that story is relevant. I know that they're going to have a money issue for the most part. Mm -hmm. Do you have a yeah. money story or a favorite money? I say, do you? It's like, um, you know, obviously you do. We got a whole book full of stories. But I mean, do you have a favorite yeah. one that you'd like to share here that people can relate to that can nudge them past money limitations and to seeing money prosperity? Yes, yes. So, well, I'll share this. I do have many stories. I'll share this one because it just happened. <laughs> it was just so outrageous, which I love it. So um, I thought of you and your outrageous marketing and what I was thinking about. And his name is Joe, too. The other person I'm thinking, I just, I don't know. I, I like Joe's, I guess. <laughs> so, um, so Joe came to me about five years ago and uh, he was a struggling entrepreneur and salesperson. And he was trying to figure out how to make more money. You know, he was doing good work. He was following up with people. He's doing all the stuff that he feels that you're supposed to do in order to grow your business and your book of sales and your bottom line. And, and he just was struggling. And he's like, if I could just, you know, do mid six uh, figures, that would change my life. I would be so happy. And uh, we started working together and I started immediately looking for the unconscious beliefs because I'm obsessed that that's that's where the breakthroughs happen because that's what I've noticed over all these 26 years of, you know, 15,000 sessions one after another. And, uh, and so it turned out that he also felt like he was not worthy and it was messing up his sales because he was, didn't want to be pushy. He didn't want to have to lean in. He didn't want anybody to get mad at him and not like him. He was afraid that if he really stayed passionate, that it was going to turn people off and he would lose customers. Mm. And so he wasn't drawing the line in the sand. You know, he was doing what most people who struggle with money were doing, chasing validation and not seeing the own, their own worth and not leaning in and pulling back instead, not launching forward. And so we upgraded those beliefs. And the following year, he did hit his six figures. OK, well, I told you how I stay. I mean, Joe's a friend of mine now. And so um, so the second year he um, had a really amazing year and he sold uh, seven figures over a million dollars and he was so excited he won this uh, sales record he had this trophy and he was showing me his trophy he was so proud as a little statue of a guy ripping his shirt off you know and just ah and he was so proud the third year he sold like five million dollars and he he set company records and he got three trophies i have a picture of him holding three <laughs> trophies with a big <laughs> smile on his face <laughs> and this year because of covid he had a whole bunch of people that weren't spending any money and so this year they were making up for it he called me up i have a voicemail he, he called me up and he said tim i don't even know what to say i'm at 24 million dollars for the year <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> awesome is right. That's wow. what I said. I was like, oh my God, I called him back. I'm like, Joe, you know, we were doing the happy dance, right? He sold $24 million. I mean, that's amazing. Now, before he had any of that, when he was broken, he was struggling and he felt like he wasn't good enough for himself, for his marriage, for his kids, when he felt like, because those beliefs, I call it achiever syndrome. You know, those those beliefs, that anxiety that cause us to feel like we're going to transform the world and we're going to conquer the world. Well, the other side of that is imposter syndrome and running mm -hmm. by anxiety and always feeling like we don't know what to do or we're going to run out or we're never going to make it or we're going to lose it. You know, all that anxiety and fear. He had all of that. And during that time, I kept telling him, Joe, you're a multi-million dollar sales professional. You're a multi-million dollar man. You're a, you give multi millions of dollars worth of value and people love you and they're so loyal to you. And I just kept beating that into his head, you know, and just confusing him 
with those loving, empowering suggestions until he started doing it on his own. And then it shifted how he showed up. And then it shifted those relationships. And then over a period of years, it turned into $24 million. And so that's uh, that was a money story that happened to me in, or that happened that Joe, Joe shared in the last two weeks. <laughs> and that is an inspiring story. I so love it. And I love your passion in telling it because you have the same boyish excitement that I get when I have these kind of stories to share and these kind of successes. I want to interview at some point a man who was homeless in Thailand who became a billionaire by working on himself, using a lot of the principles, it, he says he actually owes all of his success to me, even though I met him after he became a billionaire. He watched the movie The Secret. He read the books that I wrote. He uh, applied everything and he said, I owe my success to you, Jack Canfield, Bob Proctor, some of the teachers in The Secret. And my point of bringing it up is, and I'll interview him on a show in the future, is that what you just said in your story illustrated so many points. One is, much like my homeless friend in Thailand, it doesn't matter who you are or where you are. The second thing is, there's nobody to blame. When I said in the introduction about we're going to look around and we're going to say, you know, who's at blame here? Who's going to fix this? Who's at fault? Actually, nobody's at fault and nobody is at blame, but you are responsible for changing your life. And that's what my friend in Thailand did. That's what your friend Joe had done at that point. Another thing was you gave him some of the tools, like believing in himself, which at first, when you first get these tools, you don't really fully believe in them because they're brand new. It's like putting on brand new shoes. And there's a little bit of a tightness there until you wear them a little bit. And then it's like, yeah, those are my shoes. And I wear them all the time. <laughs> and then another thing that you <laughs> illustrated there was that you believed in him. And I have said many times that sometimes you need a person who believes in you more than you believe in yourself to kind of kickstart you, which is why it's so important that I, I believe in coaching. I believe in mentoring. I've hired you as the hypnotist for me. I believe in getting outside help at the appropriate times because we can't always do it for ourselves. What is your belief on that? Oh, 100% agree. Yeah, I've always said that sometimes you just need one person to believe in you so you can believe in yourself and, and to show you a new possibility, right? Yeah. And that's why so many entrepreneurs are lone wolves. You know, you're doing it all by yourself and trying to shoulder all that pressure and stress and uncertainty. And that is the toughest way of doing it. You got to collaborate. You got to get around other entrepreneurs who understand you, who get you, who understand the pressures and understand the obsessions and the passion, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and so... It's so important that you're around other people that believe in you. And I totally agree. We can do a whole show on that alone, just having a support system. And a lot of who you think will be your support system probably isn't going to be. I mean, it was Napoleon Hill who said that one of the number one reasons for failure is believing family and friends. So your support system <laughs> may not be in your inner circle and your bloodline. Yes. It may come from, yeah. and usually from my experience, it does come from the outside. I want to ask you a personal yeah. question, Tim. And then again, this is just me flying by the seat of my pants, wanting to make a great show, wanting to help people and digging a little bit into you. Tell me a dark night of the soul that you went through and how you got through it. Sure. Yeah. Which one, <laughs> right? So I've been in private practice for, for 26 years and, you know, I, my business has gone through like everybody else. Uh, I remember sitting there uh, on September 11th, you know, 2001, and I'm getting ready to go to the office and I see an airplane crash into a, you know, a skyscraper in New York City. I'm like, oh, this isn't good. And my business just pretty much stopped. You know, and I thought, what am I going to do? You know, if people don't come in to see me, how am I supposed to feed my family? And, you know, and then I went through it again in 2009, 2010 with the financial uh, crisis with the housing, you know, bubble when that blew up. And, and now we're going through a worldwide pandemic. All my keynotes disappeared and my practice disappeared because, you know, people, when they go through extreme fear, we retreat. You know, we, a lot of times we're like an ostrich. We stick our head in the sand. And that's when you need people the most. And so that's why I always hated that term, um, you know, social distancing. It was just physical distancing. We needed to be more socially together. 
So I've had many, many dark nights of the soul where I felt like I wasn't good enough. I didn't know what to do. I wasn't smart enough. I was always trying to get someone else to rescue me because I didn't feel like I was going to be able to figure it out on my own. And then I'd be up all night just sitting there scared and angry and frustrated mm -hmm. that how come I can't figure this out or how come it hasn't worked out for me or, you know, I've done all the work and I've read all the books and how come things aren't, you know, why isn't it clicking for me? And I will tell you one of my favorites, favorite Joe Vitale stories. And I saw, I've said this before, but people need to hear it because it's so good. So um, we were doing an interview one time for that book. And, uh, and I was feeling sorry for myself. I was feeling down because I was, you know, I'd put 10 things up and nine of them would fall over and I couldn't figure out, you know, instead of going that one thing, I was like, why the other nine things fall apart? And so I said, Joe, do you ever think that some people are just luckier than others? Right. And, and you, your reply, both replies, it was so powerful. It knocked me back. And your first comment was, well, there's a lot of victimhood in that question. And I'm like, oh my God, Joe knows he's busting me out. And I'm like, that can't be true. I wrote the book, get out of your way. You know, I can't be true. Well, it was true, right? And so, so first he had the courage to call me out. And then he, the second thing he said was even more mind blowing. He said, let's say there are some lucky people in this world. Why don't you just choose to be one of them? And I went, my brain went, what? Can you do that? I mean, and you know, and part of me with all my training and all of your books I've read, I'd be like, you can do that. That's genius. How come I never thought of that before? And so I immediately started telling myself, I'm a lucky person. Mm -hmm. And when I started telling myself that, I started telling myself that. I always say, if you have to say something a thousand times before you believe it, get started. And so I started walking around the house. I'm a lucky person. I'm a lucky person. I'm like Midas. Everything I touch turns to gold. You know, I'm a lucky person. And, and then I'd have opportunities. Like I had an opportunity to hang out with Les Brown. And I would have been like, he's not going to want to talk to me. But no, little Joe in my head said, I'm a lucky person. I'm a lucky person. So I called him up. And now Joe and I are, I'm Joe, you and me both. And right. but, but Les Brown and I are now buddies. I was talking to him the other night, right? And I'm still pinching myself. I'm hanging out with Joe Vitale and Les Brown. What's going on? And my brain says, I'll tell you what's going on. I'm a lucky person and things mm. work out for me. So that is it's very powerful. And I'll always be in your debt for that, Joe, because it was really a game changer for me. Thank you, Tim. That is such a beautiful story. <laughs> Gay Hendricks has a book called Conscious Luck. And one of the things he says is just to begin saying and believing that you're lucky, that just the statement and then the belief kind of moves you into a mindset that starts seeing it around you and you start making decisions and acting as if it's there. And all the way back to William James in the 1800s, you know, act as if and it becomes reality. So it is, it's a wonderful thing. We're running out of time. So I want to give you a chance to say, where can people find you online and where is the best place for them to get one belief away? Yes, thank you, Joe. So Amazon is the best place to grab the book or any of the books that uh, I've written. Or you can go to timsure.com or indiehypnosis.com. All my resources are there. And I just want to say, uh, Congratulations. This is a spectacular format, an amazing program. And Lux Media is, you know, amazing. And so this is gonna, your show is gonna touch so many people's lives, and the timing is just divine. So I'm just so honored that I got to share this time with you. And I'm really rooting for you and very excited for all the good you're gonna bring into the world. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. I get teary-eyed to hear that. I'm going to speak for a couple minutes for the listeners that are here to remind you that we're going to air the show every week and this is on the lux media studio network candace Barr has set this up and out of the generosity of her heart she's made this possible she said to me she said joe your genius zone is to be authentic and to inspire and motivate people i also consider that to be my life calling so to have the opportunity to do it here for Lux Media Studio and for everybody that's watching is amazing. It's, a, it's a miraculous. I wear a shirt that says expect miracles. I sign my emails saying expect miracles. And a little bit like Tim's story about 
starting to believe you're lucky. I am lucky. Start to believe in miracles. Start to see them. Pretend that they're actually there. And what you're looking at on a daily basis will suddenly morph into the reality that, oh, wow, that's actually a miracle. Life is actually a miracle. And what I want to do in all these weekly programs is I want to find interesting people that will give you practical, inspiring tools. And I personally want to segment a little bit of time on each episode where I can talk about what I've learned or some of the people that I've worked with. I've written 80 some books, so I can talk about marketing, metaphysics, spirituality, publicity, copywriting. I've got all kinds of things to pull from. I'm here for you. And what I would like you to do is be here when we air and tune in and tell your friends, like the show, tell the show, and go out there and be good to yourself, appreciate yourself, love yourself, know you are a lucky person. And expect more. Godspeed. Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radical, bacteria, and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASA. NASA increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.salvationnutra.com.